today's podcast is all about framing. So if you haven't heard of framing, framing is basically how we position our copy or if you're writing an ad, how you position the ad. It's all about perception and how we interpret the information. As marketers and copywriters, you know the way we present information influences how people perceive and respond to our message. So today I want to focus on the five, there's many different types of framing, but the five main types that you're likely to run into or types of framing that you would want to use for your product or service. Number one is called emotional framing. This is my personal favorite because as a conversion copywriter, everything is about emotion. And you've probably heard this a million times. We make decisions based on emotion and justify it with logic. So even people who think they are not making decisions based on emotion, oh, I'm a logical person, you're still using emotion. There's research that backs us up, which is beyond what I want to get into in today's podcast. But just trust me, this is what we do. So you make decisions based on emotion. So if you can trigger emotion in your reader, they're more likely to trust you and make a decision based on that feeling. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples of some of it's going to be B2C and also B2B examples. So because some of the B2C emotional framing is really powerful and you've probably all seen this. So one of the examples is Procter & Gamble's has a thank you mom campaign that shows how P&G products can help moms support their children through various challenges and emphasizes the emotional bond between them. And then Doves, this is one that really was out there quite a bit and was one of my personal favorites. They call it the Real Beauty Campaign, which challenges traditional beauty standards, right? And it celebrates women of all shapes, sizes, and ages, encouraging viewers to do the same. And so when we look at B2B, so those are B2C, but emotional copy and emotional framing is also used a lot in B2B, but a, it's a little more subtle. So for example, Slack. Their website copy uses emotional framing to position their collaboration software as a solution for teams that want to work together more efficiently and effectively. And Microsoft, their copy uses emotional framing to position their business productivity software as a solution for businesses that want to empower their employees and drive innovation. So that's where the emotion comes in. The second type of framing, which is also very often used, is positive framing. So positive framing highlights the benefits of a product or service. So for example, instead of saying a particular option saves you money. So when I write pricing pages, for example, I won't say this is cheaper or you know saves you money, but we call it cash flow friendly, which frames it in a much more positive light. Okay, so Google's ads website copy uses positive framing as well to position their advertising platform as a solution for businesses that want to reach their target audience and drive sales. And then LinkedIn, their website copy uses positive framing to position their professional networking platform as a solution for businesses that want to find top talent and build their brand. And other ones like B2C that you may have seen Coca-Cola is, you know, taste the feeling, focuses on the positive emotions. Again, we're going back to emotions. So there's, there's a blend between these sometimes, and there's overlap, you know, but there's a positive emotions associated with drinking Coca-Cola. And McDonald's, I'm loving it campaign, you know, focus on the positive emotions associated with eating McDonald's food. And number three is... Social proof framing. So this involves like testimonials, reviews, and endorsements that show that other people like you who have had positive experiences with a particular product or service talk about it. So in TripAdvisors, they have millions of reviews. One place is a tagline. Their campaign uses social proof framing to position their website as the go-to source for travel recommendations. And then Adobe's website copy uses social proof framing to position their creative software as a solution for businesses that want to produce high quality marketing content. 
But this is a very powerful thing. So we use a lot of social proof. Like if you are ever shopping for any product, especially if it's a high-end product, say a new TV, a new computer, or something that is, you know, several thousand dollars, or at least, you know, it's it's a pretty big investment. You're going to look at what other people are saying about it. I think we've gotten very skeptical though, and people are not as likely to believe social proof like we used to in the past. So it's a matter of really making sure that what you're saying, what your people are saying back up what it is that you want them, you want others like them to perceive. The fourth type of framing is framing as a solution. And this seems like kind of a logical thing. Of course, if people are looking for something, they're looking for a solution to a problem that they have, a challenge they have. So in this case, you're framing your product or service as that solution that they are looking for. Apple's famous for this. And and I bring up Apple a lot in this because Apple is really known for their above and beyond awesome ads. And even though uh, most of it's B2C, it's still, yeah, the thinking that goes on behind it and the logic and just the approach is beneficial regardless of what you're writing. So they have, and this was one of the most famous ones, their Think Different campaign. It's two words, but it's so powerful. Who knows how long it took for them to come up with this? Because a lot of times the shorter the ad copy the longer it takes to come up with it because you don't have the luxury of having people try to figure out what you're saying or interpret it a different way. There's not a whole lot of ways to think, you know, to, to, to think different. So the think different campaign frames Apple products as a solution to the problem of conformity and mediocrity, which is a big problem. Uh, so HubSpot They also use this. So their website copy uses a problem solution framing to position their marketing automation software as a solution for businesses that want to attract, engage, and delight their customers. And another B2B company, Salesforce, their website copy also uses that problem solution framing. And they position the CRM software as a solution for businesses that want to improve sales and customer relationships. And I think this is probably one that's used most often in B2B, if I were to say, because I do a lot of this type of writing. And it's always first finding what is the problem? Where is the challenge? And then how can, in my case, you know, my client's product help overcome that challenge? The fifth type of framing that we're going to talk about today is what's called fear framing which sounds pretty scary, but it involves tapping into a person's fears and creating a sense of urgency. Like you've got to get this done now. So life insurance companies, for example, do this by emphasizing, you know, the financial burden of what would happen if there's an unexpected event. And banks also use this to encourage people to save for retirement, to show how financial insecurity can really lead to a major problem. So those are some of the most popular ways to frame copies. So quickly, just to review, number one is emotional framing, where we use emotion to really capture attention. Number two, positive framing, where you're emphasizing the benefits of your product or service. Number three, social proof framing, where you show people that, hey, there's others like you who have the same, who have positive experience. And then four is framing as a solution, which I think is the most popular. Here is the problem and here's how we can help you solve that. And then lastly, and again, there are more than these. These are just five. Um, The fifth one is fear framing, where you tell people what will happen basically if they don't take advantage of your product or service. So I hope you enjoyed this. And if so, please subscribe. And thanks so much for listening.